Middle Path Radio, your number one online Islamic talk station. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Um, Middle Path Radio again. I welcome you all. As we are here at Middle Path Radio, we are going to talk about English. We will we'll mix it up because we have some, mashallah, really good guests tonight. Uh, we are going to ask you, um, he's a boxer himself and he's a trainer. Uh, his name is Abdul Hanan. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Hanan Bai to introduce himself and things he does, and then we go along with it. Hanan Bai, can you just, um, to our viewers, yeah. introduce yourself yeah. and then things you do? Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone watching. Um, my name is Abdul Hanan. I'm the director and head coach of Brawlers Boxing. Currently, I'm working as a senior youth worker in a community centre based in East London, Tower Hamlets. So I work with a lot of young people aged 13 to 19 and we deliver a range of provisions to keep young people active. I also work at, in a secondary school as a mentor and I mentor young kids on the behaviour, the progression, um, just everyday needs basically. And currently, I'm also um, volunteering for City of London Police as a volunteer um, boxing trainer. So I work with a lot of disadvantaged and vulnerable kids and kids that need a lot of help. So oh, that's me in a nutshell. Oh, brilliant. Now we go to um, the champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him to explain himself. Um, Emran, can you say yourself? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. You Hello everyone. My name's Emran Hussain. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I'm the UKBU British lightweight champion. Um, I won this title earlier this year. I fought a very tough opponent to get it. Um, I haven't been boxing for that long, to be honest with you. I only started fighting about three years ago. And hopefully my plan is to turn professional very soon and trying to just be a good role model to the local community and help the youngsters who are getting into boxing to keep them into it and just anything I can do to help them because that's where I started from as well. And the last one, not the least, um, MashaAllah, very young person, Ahmad. Yeah. Ahmad, introduce yourself to the uh, audience. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmad and I've recently just joined Brawlers Boxing. And my experience throughout since I've started has been absolutely astounding. Um, yeah, I've met one, uh, some wonderful uh, peers like uh, my coach and Emran and a few other individuals who have uh, showed me great determination and have inspired me throughout. Oh, fantastic. I'm sure you'll be very uh, inspired by these people. Because things are really looking good and also nasty as well. I'm not the our young people that are going to model night that have not into drugs, into a lot of bad things. I don't want to say those names, especially I don't know who's watching us. Um, well, I met them, I'm really proud of them. Uh, as soon as that they told me, uh, especially when I met Hanan Bai, he gave me, uh, told me regarding this young man here, I was really, really proud. And today I was surprised to know, you, uh, I think I texted you as well, um, our ex, um, how, how do you say, Deputy Mayor, the ex one, um, the councillor, he was really proud as well. He said, how? Oh, I didn't know this thing happening in our community. And I told him, if you got time, just come and meet them. So he might, do, he might join us. So great, let's yeah. see what happens. Um, Hanan Bai, I know you're yes. a coach now. You look still young and mashallah, you've been doing so much yes. stuff yourself. Um, tell me, how did you get into boxing and why did you choose boxing? So um, I got into boxing roughly about eight years ago. Uh, I was a very, very troubled kid, if you like to call it. Um, constantly getting in trouble in and out of school, being excluded and I didn't have somewhere where I could belong or feel a sense of belonging, uh, a sense of unity and I used to hang about with the wrong peers, um, there was a lot of pff, gang culture going on and then I remember this uh, and I still remember this, 2004 it was Athens Olympics and I saw Amikhan on TV and I saw a young kid, 17 years old, take silver and I thought, wow, if this boy can do it, so can I. And I, I, that was my inspiration to join boxing as a young kid at the age of 15. I've, I competed for about five years until I, 
I had a few injuries and a few upsets in my life, which I will share later on. So how far did yeah. you go? You were a national quarter finalist. What does it yes. mean? Yes. So I boxed in a tournament, ABA Championship. is one of the most prestigious tournaments, if you would like to call it, in amateur boxing. So I, I was North East London champion. I was London champion. I was national pre-quarter finalist. And finally, I got to national quarter finals. The guy I lost against was Rhys Bellatoli. Now he's two-time England champion and on his way to the Olympics England team. So I, lo I lost against a very tough opponent. I also travelled to Denmark to box in an international tournament. It's called High Vidovri International Boxing Tournament, which took place. And through my experience in boxing, I've met a lot of wonderful people who I'm really close to now. Uh, so why did you choose boxing? Why not uh, something else like karate, kung fu, or somebody said, um, what is it, a crazy kung fu or something? <laughs> to, be, to be honest... Kung fu, really. yeah. <laughs> yeah, what did you choose in the other ones? Why, why not? Yeah. What's the difference? To be honest, we're living in a city, yeah, in a, one of the most deprived boroughs in the whole country. Martial arts at that time was fairly expensive, and we came from a family which, which wasn't that um, well off. So if you would like to join martial arts, it was very expensive. It was, there wasn't many classes going on at that time, and if you did go to uh, martial arts classes, it was fairly expensive. Boxing was one pound a session. Cheap and cheerful, uh, instead of having chicken and chips, you could go boxing. <laughs> so I chose boxing, and I remember walking in through the doors, and I can remember um, the bells going off, there was that smell, um, you can really f feel that presence of boxing going on. And I've naturally just connected with boxing, and from there, I just w grew a love for it, a bond for it, and I took it any further. Yeah, so that's what. Fantastic. Yeah. Can I come to you now, young man? Yeah, yeah of course you can. Can yeah. I link you? Uh, can I just say, because I feel proud to say you're a champion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel proud that you can call okay. me a champion. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, not very often we see Bengali guy, young man, very handsome mm. man, very young man, oh, your okay. age. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We see as a champion. Yeah. At least I know for, at least we can say champion. Um, how did you get into this? And um, it's a funny story, really, because to be honest with you, I didn't want to get into boxing. How it started off was I was in secondary school. And in, in the beginning, you say, I can't stop you when you start. So I'm going to use this to stop you if okay. you don't stop. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. make sure you stop. If, if you can hit me with okay. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go. Um, well, what it was, I started, it was in secondary school, and I really had no intention. I was a fairly quiet child, I was very reserved, I was quite shy. I didn't have a lot of confidence, and unfortunately, like a lot of kids out there, I did get bullied a bit. So, so what, 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 can you give us an example? Because a lot of kids nowadays, they get bullied. Yeah. And some boys, my young boy, he's, um, he's really shy to get on new people. But if somebody just makes a little comment, that's it. All day for him is gone. And I think this is something my age group we don't know what bully can do to people so can you just give us a few tips i can completely relate to that because i was really sh quiet and very sensitive as a kid so if someone said one little thing to me it would really get to me and i would be in the point where i'd be in almost in tears or i'd have to move away because i know i'm gonna, I'm gonna tr cry and for a child that's obviously like really heart-wrenching for them you might think oh, it's something small but obviously to them it means a lot more so obviously then i used to, i was always really sensitive and well, what happened was the way I got into it was there was a friend of mine and he lived close to me and he was the one that actually wanted to get into boxing and he didn't want to go in his own so he'd come and tell me come let's go let's go and I'd be like no he'd knock on my door every day it was what it was it was in this church hall so it's like a youth project so it wasn't even a proper boxing gym it was an empty church hall and there was like two maybe three instructors there and there was just loads of kids off the street so they were just trying to get kids off the street and he used to bug me, so he'd come to my house, knock on my door until I came out, then he'd wait for me and then take me with him. And I went there and I was like, okay, I don't really, I was never really athletic either, keeping, bearing that in mind, I wasn't athletic as a child either. And then what happened was he'd keep doing, so we went for a little while. So he'd, every two, I think it was a Monday and a Wednesday, six o'clock, so he'd come and knock on my door every day, get me ready, and then he was the one that was really into it. He went and bought his hand wraps, the bandages, the gum shield, and he was getting... Who, who are you talking about? Do you want to name him? Who, um, his name's Monshaw. Okay. So, he used to live I'm in my... I'm sure Monshaw would be proud now. Monshaw, if he's watching, yeah, Monshaw, this <laughs> is this is for you, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was through him that I got into it. So he was the one that was more into it. Like I said, I was never really a sporty or athletic child. And to this, probably about 14 at this time, 14, 15. So what kind of bully did he get? 
Well, a lot well, of the time. You don't want to say it to your fans. No, it's fine. I'm now. Alhamdulillah, boxing has helped me to grow so much in confidence that this won't happen to me now. Not because I'll knock him out or anything like that, but because um, confidence-wise, he's given me a big, big confidence boost. But a lot of the time, what it is is verbal. You might think saying something to someone is won't really hurt them, but a lot of the time, it was more verbal bullying. That's what that's what I used, used to happen to me. Just before I met you, I met your coach. He's a Richard, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, Richard. he's the first. Yeah, person Richard I started watching. with. Hello to Richard. He will be watching. I'm going to show him as well. You are rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he done to me? He stopped me. I go. Uh, walk next door to Richard. I see somebody there. And um, he said to me, I got to know him, and he said to me, do you know Emran? I said, I, I don't know. He said, you should know him. He's from the community. But I have to tell you something. Listen, he wasn't there. He said a lot of good things about you. He said he's one of the mm. most kindest person I've met. He's so sensible. He comes to my house every day, mashallah. He comes to my house, and he's a champion now, and he should be proud of that. And I said, okay, I want to meet him then one day. He said, okay, I'll meet him. i get him to meet you. I said, I have a little son. And he loves to meet boxers. I told you, isn't it? Yes, and he called yes, him as yes. well. Hello to you him. Know, I spoke to him. <laughs> you know the special thing about, I think, I felt really proud because he's from a community now at the moment in there. Everybody, oh, these guys are terrorists, these guys and that. This English man, he's, he's a coach. And he's telling me about him, how good he is. So that proves that if you're a good person, wherever you are, people will appreciate that. So you did make a difference to others as well. They see you as a model, they see you as a good person, and it makes our community bright as well. So I'm glad um, the, the way you are. That's fantastic. Can I ask you something before I go to this young man? Um, you're a boxer now. Yeah. What was the funniest thing you've done then? What, what was the... Um, in, in boxing, I'm sure you, you trip yourself, you fold yourself, you somehow punch oh, you in the nose. What there's, was the funniest there's, there's thing? There's been you've... a few funny things, Go but... On. I, I'll tell you two, two incidents. There was one involving me and one involving a friend. Okay. And this one was funny for other people, but it wasn't funny for me. Basically, when I used to have, we used to have our own gym up until last year. So we used to have a lot of people coming. It was me and Richard. And so we used to have a lot of people come training. We used to train a lot of women as well. And he used to basically stick me in the <laughs> ring with the women, saying, all right, Imran, you can't hit them back. Let them try and hit you. So it gives them a bit of uh, confidence to try and hit me. And one time one of them hit me a bit low to say in the lower region between the legs and actually hit me pretty hard i was down and out on the floor for about half an hour i couldn't i was struggling to breathe she, was, she wanted to knock you out so that she done it that's maybe, fine yeah because i kept moving my head she couldn't hit the head so she went for something else that wasn't moving i guess <laughs> fantastic what was the other one then the other one was um, i went to watch a friend fight and this is in an amateur competition and he hit this and the guy was fighting he hit him with a right hand and the guy he fell backwards he done a somersault backwards and he stood back up on his feet again and i was looked at him i was thinking is this guy on drugs or something <laughs> the way he's just done that at the time it was really funny but i bet he was with prince, prince nasim wasn't it? he used to do that yeah. <laughs> or chris eubank wasn't it he used to yeah. do that as well okay young man i come to you now yeah. so you go to school which school do you yeah. go to it's only secondary school um so so what are you doing now at the moment? Which class and what uh, year are you in? At the moment I'm in year 9 and I'm in 9A and I've recently started my GCSEs so that's getting quite rough for me now. But So is boxing helping you or is, is boxing because you're doing education or you're studying now? Does it help you to concentrate or does it... What happens? Tell the uh, audience. Yeah, um, boxing is helping me with my confidence. Like with boxing, I train with uh, older people, and um, that builds my confidence more. So when I'm doing my exams and that, my confidence is high, so I wouldn't be worrying. So yeah. I had you a champion in run, running as well, wasn't he? Oh, yes. so can you tell, say something about that? Yeah, um, ever since uh, primary, my uh, fitness I was really. Like, in athletics was really good so I thought um, my coach came up to me and he said um, why don't why don't you join this um, run with me so then I'm like well, yeah, why not so I went with him on the day and then um, we started the jog so and then I ran with him I ran um, and then I catched up to him and as soon as I catched up you know, I gave my coach a great big smile and I was like proud like I'm with my, I'm running with my coach right now and I'm like I was so that Adrenaline was great. So and then my coach, he he. When you say coach, who who do you mean? 
coach H. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. My co- yeah, so I, I was going ahead with him, and then my coach was like, you know what, you take the lead. So and I was like, is it, wow, he's actually giving me this opportunity. So I'm like, all right, let me, he gave me this opportunity, so let me just prove him that I'm worth it. So I, w- I went, and then... Uh, how, how does your friend see you now? You're a boxing, you're a boxer now. Yeah. How do they see you now? How yeah. do they see you? My, my friends, uh, before they used to come up to me and like budge me and push me around, and ever since I started boxing and I've been known as a boxer now, they my friends respect me more and uh, they come up to me and cheer me and say, "How am I doing? Am I doing great?" And that. So I really appreciate that because that's like I I'm more like I appreciate it how, more. How old are you now? I'm 14 years old now, just turned 14. Brilliant. Um, brothers and sisters, the ones are watching. I think sometimes my kids are 18 and 19. My older kid is uh, ni- going to be 19. And um, if I tell them to come in front of the camera, he would, they, they would never do that. Even myself, I couldn't face that. So 14 years old, mashallah, confidence yeah, is very high. Very and he was really, he done better than me. You know, it's, <laughs> and then they know who is your friends now, isn't it? If they mess about your friends, you know who yeah. to go to. Yeah. And um, back to you again. Yes, right. Um, if I ask you something, when was the last time you've been to Bangladesh? So, um, the last time I went to Bangladesh was in 2008. Who was the Prime Minister then? I think he was Khaled Azia. Wow, um, wow, you know the name. Yes. Fantastic. Who is it now? Uh, Hasina. Allah, I'm surprised. That's good, good. You got some uh, back, you know, home knowledge as well. That's brilliant. Yes. Um, I'm a very, very. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm very not into uh, apart from my religion. Now, also, the religion is, comes first. Um, I care about my culture. I care about my heritage. I care about uh, my family lineage, my values, uh, my parents' values, and where they come from, and uh, what's res- what does respect mean to them, and what does respect mean to our family. And I just love Bangladesh. As a, yeah, I do. Okay, what would you say to the person mm. your English neighbor is watching now? Yes, some of them will do that. What would you say to them regarding they see us as a, um, some of the people, some of the yes. Muslims are terrorists. Yeah. I admit that, but not all of us. Okay, but they see because of the media problem, they probably see us all of us as the same same thing. Yeah. So, what would you say to them if they watch that? What would you say to them? So, first thing, my opinion is, how do you differentiate between uh, a bad apple and a good apple, and what it is? If it's a bad person, his true colors will shine. If it's a good person, his true colors will shine I also as well. The, hence why you can judge what's good and what's bad. And like the famous saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. And you can't uh, paint um, paint the same brush with everyone. Do you get it? Everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Everyone has a different sense. Uh, everyone has a different understanding. And that's what it is. We're all different. And we're all in a, 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 a mission. Uh, in life, do you get it? And, and that's to live life peacefully with our neighbors, with our families, and create community cohesion, create harmony into the community. And that's what Islam is all about. Fantastic. Yes. You know, uh, you live in uh, Shadwell. Yes. Where there's a lot of young people around, isn't it? Yeah. And there are a lot of good and bad ones. You doing boxing. What yes. kind of what kind of future do you see for them, or do you have any vision for them? Those young men in your of local. So. Um, before previously I spoke about my profession which is a youth worker and I do not see youth working as a job for me it's a responsibility for me to get paid for my youth working I can't be grateful enough to get paid for youth working is one of the most privileges in my life to work with a wide range of young people with different needs and different abilities uh, as a young person growing up in the, in the community, I didn't have a sense of belonging. I didn't have a person that I could look up to or a person that I could speak to. And for me to change the direction, to, to, uh, to choose what I had to choose and go through, made me the person who I am. So now what I do as a youth worker is give young people a sense of direction, a sense of belonging. Um, I don't do it for them. I make them understand, make them think that they can too do it as well. Do you get it? So what we do is create opportunities for young people, give them hope, um, a sense of affection. Um, so what young people look for nowadays is to be a part of something. No last, yeah. no, last Monday I went to see you. Yes. And I was just sitting there. I was just looking around. Yeah. Around you, you had about 
well, 15, uh, 15 kids, wasn't it? Yeah. He was there as well. I was just looking at the way they look at you. The when you say about the stand and how they follow you. Yes. And there's some respect there. They wouldn't do that without any okay. respect. So I know you have a boxing club yourself. Yeah. Do you want to say something about your boxing club? Um, what's your future for the, that boxing club? Is it diff yes. What kind of difficulty sure. are you finding? Okay. Are you going to get any help from the local government or not? Okay. Um, the reason why I set it up, Brawlers Boxing. So Brawlers Boxing is a community interest company, so it's not for profit. Um, how we run our classes is adults. We have adult sessions and we have young people sessions. So adults come into our sessions, they pay to get fit, they pay to learn boxing. That money is then reinvested back into the club and the young people train for free. So the adults train twice a week, young people train four days a week. So that's a cycle that's going and that's the model of Brawlers Boxing. The future aims and objective is to make it more sustainable. The club needs to be sustainable. If the if there is deficiency deficiency in the adult session, there is deficiency in the young people session. But me being a youth worker and a boxing trainer, I never cut out the boxing sessions. I will not let that go. Because this is the bread and butter of our community. And this is the the young if, uh, there's a famous saying, if you want to know how a country is or how a nation is, then look to its young people. You get it? Because they are the pioneers, they are the leaders, and they are the ambassadors for the country, and they will make social change. So it, w the reason why I started Brawlers Boxing is to make a social change, first of all. Second of all is to inspire a generation of young people to be proactive, to be leaders, and also to believe in themselves. Do you get Fantastic. it? Young people don't believe in themselves. They need to believe in themselves that they can do it. They could be the next Bill Gates. They could be the next superstar, the next model. It's all about us as guardians, us um, as facilitators for young people, educators, teachers, social workers, youth workers, whoever you are and you are working with young people, you have the power to change it and help these young people grow. And that's, 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 no, no, that's no, what it's in a nutshell. That's brilliant. Basically. No, no, that's brilliant. Um, back to you again, young man. We were talking about bullying and funny things. Yeah. And, um, so what's your aim? What do you want to do? Well, my aim, when I first started off, to what my aims are now, they're totally different. Like I said, in the beginning, I never ever... But do you get support from your home? Um, that's one big obstacle that I've been sort of fighting along the whole way since I started. Do you think it's a misunderstanding or you just like they think... Do you know what like it is? It's anything. Bengali people don't like this in particular when you say this to them, but in general, this is the truth. They're they are very close-minded when it comes to what you should do and what you shouldn't do. You will agree that a lot of them will say, I want my son to grow up and be a doctor, I want him to be a lawyer, I want him to be this. They will never ever say, I want him to go into sports or to anything apart from that. They will sort of want all the safe options. And there's nothing wrong with that, but what it is, because of that, a lot of the young Bengali brothers and sisters, they don't get the support when it comes to sports and other aspects in life. So when I started boxing at first, my parents, they were like, okay, you can go. They're like, okay, just to sort of learn a bit of self-defense, that's fine. And the moment I said to them, I want to start competing, it was no. You, you can't compete. So how did you explain to them? How did you it was them? very, very difficult for me to explain to them. Well, I can understand from a parent's point of view, they didn't want me to get hurt, which is understandable. They, from someone who doesn't box or train, you look at it and you think boxing is very violent. But as um, Abdul and Emad will tell you, it's not as violent as you think. It, to the normal person, it looks like a really violent sport, but it's very technical. If you was to go and train now, you realise throwing a punch is a lot more complicated than just what you think it is. There's a lot more aspect. There's slipping, there's footwork, there's cantering. There's so many things that go into it. And at the same time, we don't just go in and have... It's not like you're having a fight on the street. You're preparing yourself. So you're conditioning your body, you're conditioning your mind. It's a lot more mental than it is physical. For so if you say, imagine a, um, a young man like him, he wants to become a boxer. Yeah. How would he, I'm sure he would, in the home they would say, don't do that. Yeah. He, he probably the first thing they would say, no, mm. you might hurt yourself. Yeah. That's, that's based on love. How would he explain to the parents? What, what would he need from personal to say? From personal experience, this is, it was very, very hard for me because um, the way I did it was, obviously I told my parents, I said, this is something I enjoy. And I had to sort of, rebel a little bit. There's no way for me to continue this. If I didn't rebel against them to some extent, I would not be where I am now. Because they said to me, you're not allowed to fight, that's it. And if I listened to them, I wouldn't have fought for the lightweight British title and I wouldn't have that now, would I? So, but are they happy now? Um, to some extent. So what happened, I'll tell you a little story. One day, 
I was sitting down and normally I don't tell my parents I'm going to fight. I'll tell them on the day. They're going to know now. <laughs> they, they know this time. They know okay. this time. So okay. Okay, but okay. Normally I don't tell them. I'll say on the day, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm fighting today. So then that way there's not enough time for them to cause, say okay. too many things to me. So otherwise I'll hear like constantly, oh, you don't do this, don't do this. So I tell them one day I was sitting down with my dad and I said to him, oh yeah, I'm fighting tonight. And he said to me, what do you mean you're fighting tonight? And he goes, I for, I for, he said, in Bengali, he said, I have I'm not So basically, he forbid me from fighting. And I was like, and he said, I thought you said you're not going to do it anymore. I said, no, I didn't say that. And he goes, you did. You told me you're not going to fight anymore. I said, no. And then he goes, this is one thing he said to me. He said, Bengalis, he said this in Bengali, I said it first. He goes, Ita boxing, amrazati manchalagina, which basically means boxing isn't for our kind of people. And I didn't say anything. Is that because, because we're small? That's got nothing to do with it. Okay. It's just like I said, it's a bit of, do you know what it is? It's no, because they don't do it. I think that's yeah. not, not, it's they, not in our they, culture. They're not yeah, they familiar with it. that yeah. sort of, in our culture, boxing is very sort of like something you is not familiar with, No, you don't really know much about it. So he said that to me and I didn't say anything at the time because I didn't want to be disrespectful and rude obviously. And he, what he said after that was he said, leave it for the blacks and the whites. So obviously straight away that sort of saying you think that the blacks and the whites they're stronger they're better at this and whatnot and everyone generally most people tend to think that. But you know, like when you say blacks and whites, it sounds racist. But do you racist, think he meant that? I don't. No, sure he doesn't. He, he didn't mean it in a racist way. He yeah, meant, he just like because when you it, see boxing, you see mainly. Um, Sir, can yeah, I can please, I just add yeah, on? Yeah, please do. Um, I think our parents fear change. Yeah, because. Um, they don't know what the outcome is or what's going to happen. So, uh, Bengali people in particular, uh, we like to be secure. That we like to know that we're secure and nothing's going to happen with us. Do you think it's a Bengali yeah. thing or do you see Asian thing? Because how often we see uh, yeah, it, Indians it, are doing that? Yeah, not it's a secure people. thing. And I think. Pakistani people. Yeah, yeah. few Pakistani now, mashallah, yeah. that's good. But not Indian. We don't I see think many. we're fairly behind. You know, I think it's Asian Genesis, we're, we're a bit cagey. We've sort of grown up in this country, so we're a little bit more outgoing. We're not as closed as our options for us. We think we've got more options. Whereas I can understand back home they didn't have it so much. But it's like one thing I have to say is my parents have become a little bit more... Not they haven't, They're haven't. not happy with me doing it still because they don't want me to get hurt. But they're a little bit more supportive in the sense... Can I, can I just quickly finish off? There are loads of parents out there now coming up to me and thanking me because... Um, boxing has helped them in their GCSEs, their studies, their behavior, and even to some extent of drugs and stuff like that. And boxing is ch changing and helping restore lives. So yes, sports is good and change is needed as well. Okay, brothers, so we're just going to go for a break in, in two minutes. we just go two minutes. Okay, just before I go, I think uh, we forgot he's a teacher. He teaches kids, isn't yeah. So you've you got yeah. more depth of knowledge on that. And uh, one thing I noticed was, there were, uh, I'm sure the parents are watching us now. <laughs> The respect you showed to your to your father, you could have said it. I'm doing it. You know, this is my life, and I'm doing it. But you didn't do that. You just went along with it and to explain to him, and he understood that. This is something we need to show because for them it's new thing. For them, boxing it can damage you. You know, and also there's a rule. It's not rumored actually. We're not allowed to hit somebody so hard, so it affects it. So there's mm -hmm. another line to that. There's a controversy. You know? Yeah. In boxing, what I saw when I was looking at you, about 95% of the things in the body and your action. How often? How often you hit somebody in the face? Okay. You don't do that. Can I? So we we'll go back to that after the break, okay, inshallah. Fine, no and brother and sister, we we'll stay with us, and we'll be back after the break. So that Mullah Khair, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah, shamanito bayu bunara. Welcome to uh, Middle Path Radio again. Um, brothers and sisters, if you missed that, you can go to um, YouTube and see our program as well. Um, back to those young men again. I feel quite old today because they're quite young for me. <laughs> but I'm very proud. I'm very proud to um, be with them. And a lot of you watching, I'm sure you'll be proud too. I'm um, very proud to be with that's everybody saying that now. If you go, I used to live in Ben Johnson Road, in the corner of PFC. Some people don't even go out in the evening. I, I used to go to Namaz, 7.30 I didn't go out. Why? The kids are in the corner. They might push me, but I don't know what's gonna happen. Even some neighbors as well. So this is how far we go. We need to know what we, how far we go. And if you don't know the problem, you can't have the solution for that. And having you guys so mature and so, the things you do. Listen, you, your life is really high. You're a champion. You can go to any nightclub. You can pull any you know, woman you want and do anything you want to do. 
And for any of you, any one of you, you know, you could do that. But you didn't choose that life. You know, you choose to put something back to your community. This is something special. You know, and the way you're speaking to their parents and their elders, now you're showing that respect. I think this is something missing in our community or other community. I live in Isle of Dogs. I live near you, actually. Yeah. I love, when I moved from Stepney to Isle of Dogs, it was totally different. Uh, it's totally different. And my kids are more, more mature now because they see other communities and others as well. So they're learning as well. Um, back to um, Hanan Bay. Um, you said you've been in Bangladesh, yes, mashallah. That's, that's good. I want to take my boys as well. I haven't been there for 15 years. Wow. Sorry, I'm not very proud of that. No, but right. um, somehow I feel um, um, I can't adjust with them. I don't know. I don't know how it is. But I have to take them back. Must be the age gap. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yes. Hanan Bai, you know you're young. You look very well. Okay. Hanan Bai, you've been to uh, Bangladesh. Tell me something about Bangladesh. You know, it reminds me of when I was about 11 years old, I went to Dhaka through oh. the, um, by the train oh. or railway station, we can say. I know they never come in time. Yeah. They, the situation, they never come in time. One time what happened was he came in exact time and he left in exact time. And he said, wow, what happened? Is that Bangladesh? And somebody asked him, what happened today? He said, you know what, this train supposed to come yesterday. <laughs> 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 so that was, the, that was that, that's how it is. I don't know if you, if you missed that. What did you see in, when you used the train to, uh, I don't know where you went? Like, Foyla, first time I went. Say in Bengali, that will make a sense. The black Islam Bangladesh of Foyla. Gyaar Islam Bangladesh, not Bangladesh. It was the day to Amar. I was like, Islam Bangladesh. No. Has a, um, no, it's a serious noise, well. Yes. Um, I mean, for the nanny, when I get off the plane, it was exactly like I was going into the oven. Uh, I was so hot, it was really. And the people around there, it's like, because you've been, with, this is the country uh, also I'm proud of, because mm. here, you can do your own thing. Yeah. In those some other countries, you can't do your own thing. So we should appreciate things are good are good. The bad are bad, simple as that. I know when you go there, it's the first thing to happen to you, you've been there new. So what did you face? So, um, I remember, English Bengali? Yeah, mix it up, no problem. Okay. Zebla, for like Islam Bangladesh, I can't say it. I can't say it. Because this country was my parents, where they came from. That's their heritage, that's their lineage, their values, that's where they learned. And when I first entered the village, uh, when I saw the people, I saw my family, I saw my relatives, although I have never seen them in my life. Uh, I, there's a natural bond, a natural feeling. What was the first food did you have? First food. Uh, and how was it? Oh, no, no, don't say how was it. No, forget it. No, in, the, in the first one, you might not like it, think you used to. Okay, forget that. Khushi, you're not going to Khushi, yeah? Khushi, you're not going to be able to Okay. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so my experience in Bangladesh was a very positive one. Um, I learned a new, new stuff. Uh, I was very humbled by it, to be honest. Uh, it was a real eye opener. And in 2008, I think I went, or 2007 it was, I saw a lot of poor people there. And I saw a lot of deprived people. And I said to myself, how fortunate am I to be, have been given all the privileges in my life? That could have been easily been me. But no, I was privileged enough to come to London, huh? first of all, be born in London, and then be raised in a... In, in, in a very well-off family, alhamdulillah. We wasn't that wealthy, but it was, alhamdulillah, it was a good family. Where, where there was food every day on the table. There were, other people in Bangladesh, they don't get that. So that was a But there are some now. people in Bangladesh, they're so rich. Yeah. They are so rich, they have properties probably in this country or around the world probably. Yeah. So there are some rich, rich people. So what would you say to the rich people then? I mean, they are rich people. It's unbelievable. They drive... Um, what is it, BMW X5, or you name it, anything, they got that. And same with India, you know, like you go to Bombay, I've been to the billionaires, yeah. millionaires, yes. yeah. but run outside that, they're in the street. So we have this, uh, something in, the, in, in those countries, okay. or, so how do you, how can we relate that, because... So Alhamdulillah, um, after Bangladesh, when I first travelled to Bangladesh, I loved it, I loved travelling. And Alhamdulillah, I managed to be into 12 countries now. I've been to 12 countries, uh, traveled to a few places around the world. Wow, um, name them. 
Uh, so I've been to Jordan, wow. I've been to Palestine, I've been to Saudi Arabia, I've been to Morocco. I climbed the highest mountain in Morocco, second tallest mountain in Africa. Um, I've been to Denmark, I've been to Germany, I'm going to Thailand in, next week. Uh, so quite a few countries I've been to. Uh, wow. the, I've been to India. Uh, do, do, do you know somebody to help you with your bags and stuff? I'll go with you. <laughs> it's fine. So would, you, would you pay for my ticket if I take you with you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm sure I can pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I think the problem is not just in Bangladesh, not just in London, is inter um, people from the town, people from the city, they're not coming together, they're not uniting. This is the problem. This is the common cause of disunity amongst communities. That, that status, or I'm better than them, or they're better than me, that level. I'm a Bangladesh. You know, we got all of these stuff that happen in Bangladesh and all that, which creates disunity and conflicts. But no, Islam does not teach us that. Islam teaches us that we are one, we should care for one another, we should care for our, our families, our neighbors. They have rights over us, and the neighbors have rights over you. And boxing taught me that. Actually, you know, you know, some people find it difficult to say mm. boxing is a new thing for them. Okay, yeah. If you could answer that, because you're a teacher yourself. Yes. Um, <coughs> people are ready to put their kids into the uh, madrashas on the school or something like that for mm. a talk, but they don't. They're not putting them for self-defense and stuff like that. Can you tell the parents? Yes. What kind of benefit they can get for the kids? What? what because mm -hmm. I'm just give you an example. Uh, first of all, hand on my heart, I can assure you, if a young person or a child gets treated fairly and equally and gets the right um, time and effort because young people they want you to be with them they, they ask a lot I, I work with a lot of young people they constantly asking questions they do your head in but when they're asking questions you got to think about their learning do you get it and when a young person goes into martial arts or any sort of martial arts or boxing whether it be it the dedication that goes into martial arts and boxing if they can put it anywhere else yeah, in life they'll be a successful person the reason why is martial arts boxing any sports it teaches them discipline adob uh, it teaches them that it teaches them respect first thing i learned when i went away boxing and when i went in boxing i thought i was a hard man to be honest, because I used to hang about with the, um, a group of um, boys who thought we were on the area, but that didn't happen. First thing I learned in the boxing was respect and discipline, and that that made me the person who I am today. Okay, last yeah. year, just before yes. I go to um, mm. the champion, the last year <laughs> I'm putting more actually. Last year, uh, I think it was a Ramadan time. Yes. You and um, other communities, uh, English community around. Yes. Um, the area, shadow area. Yes. You guys doing a lot of stuff. What, what did you do? So last year, um, previously I spoke about I'm a senior youth worker for Tarling East Community Centre based in Shadwell. Um, so what we did during Ramadan, there was a lot of conflict going on. There was a lot of noise going on. So we've partnered up with the Salvation Army and we've partnered up with volunteers from America and quite a few um, from local local boroughs and local organisations. So what we did was we did outreach work. Um, while prayers was going on, we used to meet the young people and we've kept kept the youth club open. So either we gave young people an alternative decision. Either you go to the mosque and we pray or you go to the youth club. Don't stay outside because if you're staying outside you're going to be exploited. And not only that, they're creating noise, they're making disturbance for the neighbours. Well, not, not everyone's a Muslim. So what it? was the benefit? Like, was it the, say, you could have done it yourself. Yes. But you choose to go work with the Americans and the, uh, and the Englishmen or, or whatever man, doesn't matter. Because the problem so was... So how did that work out for you? How that created was a positive community one cohesion, yeah, first of all. And Ramadan, for us, we're, we're, we're awake. We're uh, awake for Sehri, it's 3 a.m., we're going to have our food, we're getting ready for Fajr. But the, the people have work. You get it? We are non-Muslims non who are living in the bar or in, in the area. They, they go, go work early morning and Tarawi was that late. Mm -hmm. So you got young kids coming out saying they're going to pray and not praying and creating noise. So that created difficulties. So when we all came out together and said, look, you're creating a problem. You've kept the youth club open, open for you. At this time, to get the youth club open was a, was a great alternative. Okay, do you want to say something just before I go to them, to your yes. boys, the ones that are watching? I know you, you trained about 50 boys, you said, or yes. something more than that. Do you want to say anything to them before you go? Um, last message I want to say, uh, or if I do get a message, come out, is to all my young people who are watching and all the people I've worked with over the last um, five, six years, is carry on going. 
and uh, carry on believing in yourself because when you believe in yourself you're already halfway there the other half is putting the effort in and making uh, making the making the change because um, I just I just want to share a quick story if that's okay that when I, when I was a young person, 15, 16 years old, I left school with one GCSE. So I had no hope, I had no ambition to be to succeed in life. And Step Green School at that time was a bit rough and tough. And I, I had no sense of direction. And through boxing, uh, I managed to go college for four years and university for three years. And I was three marks shy from a 2-1. Do you get it? So boxing or believing in yourself or any, anything in life, just believe in yourself and you can make social change. And that's it. And that's the message I give to my young people or any young people that's watching. Thank you very Fantastic. much. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, young man, back to you. Emran. Emran Khan or Emran Hussein? Hussein, Hussein. No yeah, Khan here. <laughs> yeah, you should change the name to Emran Khan. Uh, the man <laughs> people have called me that, you will not believe. <laughs> yeah, now it's quite easy to say as well, isn't it? Yeah. Emran, um, you've been to Bangladesh, haven't you? I have, yeah. Okay, when was that? Last time I went was probably about close enough to ten years ago. So why are you so gentle? You're a boxer. Why are you so gentle? I mean, the that's way you speak okay, is so calm and that's um, one thing I, I was, I was hoping to see with, a lot come up with your also and talk like that. Uh, <laughs> viewers, um, I'm sorry, I can't do much here. And then I can do that if you want. Uh, <laughs> I know that's what the I way it is, is a lot of people assume that because I'm a boxer, I'm going to be very violent and aggressive and brash but that's not the way the only time that i am aggressive is controlled aggression as well and that's in the rings like with me i do have a very short temper but same thing again another thing boxing has taught me is to control that so i've learned to control my temper it's fun enough you might not believe this but since i've started boxing from the age of about 14 up until now i'm 22 now so that's nearly what eight years i haven't had a fight on the street and that's not because I haven't been put in the situation. There's been a number of occasions where someone said something or done something to me where I could have easily turned around and ended up having a fight. But boxing teaches you when to control yourself. So I looked at the person. I could look at, let's say, for example, he's on the street and he threw something at me or he was abusing me. I could easily turn around and hit him. But what does that achieve? I know I can hurt someone if I want to. The real strength comes in not attacking someone. Say I want to become famous and uh, you see from the camera and I just, I just do something to you. So you push me back and I go and, I go and sue you because I've got the evi evidence here, isn't it? <laughs> what would you do if I was doing something to you there? Well, first of all, for you to do that, it's on the camera as well, it shows that you instigated it. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I shouldn't I, say it. I shouldn't <laughs> say that. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. And second of all, I wouldn't hit you back. With me, it's, what else boxing has taught me as well is, you if for example, yeah, you don't know, it's like, let's say I was walking in the street and you bumped into me. I would be the first person to apologise to you. I wouldn't turn. I wouldn't start a fight with you straight away. I'd apologise to you even if it was your fault. Let's say you said it again. I'd apologise a second time. A third time, I wouldn't. Third time because I've already apologised twice and I'm not in the wrong. So if you can learn to apologise even when you're not in the wrong, then it shows you've learned something there. So I've got, I've got two chances. You've got two chances okay, be before okay. you, you get your head chopped off. <laughs> but I've got two what chance. I'm saying is it's teaches you even uh, if I've got, got to tell my boy, boy, he's only joking, don't worry, he's not going to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell my boy. Not, not on camera, don't worry. <laughs> but, don't worry, we, we, we've got a special protection for him. Yeah. So yeah. We, we can... Let, later on, we're going to get him to put that on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I'm just trying to explain is it teaches you the self-discipline again to control yourself. It's like going back to this, it's like Islamically, I've also become a lot more, I might not look like your most religious person, but Alhamdulillah, I try to pray five times a day and complete the other five pillars of Islam. And boxing has helped me a lot in that as well. People might think, oh, he's a boxer like you mentioned earlier. Oh, he's probably going out, getting loads of girls and this and that, because someone could easily do that. But it's taught me, in other sense, like I've become closer in Islam where I don't want to do all that stuff. That's not important to me. It teaches you what's important. In one way, it's kept me so busy. I, I was normally, I was training in the morning, then train again in the afternoon and then again in the evening. So where do you have time to go out and, for example, girls, drugs or any other sort of um, outlet that's not deemed to be good? So, so would you, can you predict in five or in a year time, your, your, your friends, I'm sure you're there, seeing yeah. you are there, want to do that. In five years time, do you, think, do, you, do you think we'll have a Muslim champion or do you think stuff like that? Or? Inshallah, we will do it. Do you, how do you in, see it? Inshallah, I'll be, insha in. inshallah, I'll be one of them. But, okay. <laughs> but what is, a lot of people, it's like, American was one of the first people when I looked at, I was young. 
And for so you how to many, see, okay, how many famous uh, boxers you met? Because you were a boxer yourself. How many famous did you have a link with? Now it's quite easy to um, do it now. I'm I've met partner. a few. A lot of the boxers I've met, they've been old school East London boxers. Who's you that? have to remember. Name them if you don't mind. Um, I can't remember them all off the top of okay. my head, but let me just quickly go. What is a lot of people don't realize East London has a lot of boxing heritage. So there are a lot of boxers in East London, and people, what, what they don't realize is there's a lot of um, the British culture, that community, they've had that going on for a long time. Why? Why do you, you see the British, the whites, they're pushing their kids to go boxing from a young age? Because they see how it sort of teaches them the discipline and to sort of give them something, an outlet. Because a lot of kids, like uh, my brother here, I don't know what before, they have nothing to do, they're bored, so they're going out causing trouble. And because they've got lots of energy, kids have lots of energy. If you put them in a gym, like boxing, especially where it's really physically demanding, they go in there with lots of energy, they come out drained, drained. they've got no energy to go and mess around or do this and that, whatnot. they're tired, they rest, and what is they enjoy it, because like I said, they've got a sense of belonging. It's like when I had the gym, I opened the gym with Richard, and we used to have a lot of people come here, and it was like a family. A lot of people used to come, we used to have elder people as well, not just kids, we used to train kids from the age of about four upwards, and we had, and all the kids used to train for free as well, just like um, Anand does as well, and, but the adults, they used to come in after work, and they used to be there for hours and hours, because they feel like it's a family, so if adults feel like that, how would the kids feel? Okay, just before we go, um, uh, you go you, do, would you like to say something to uh, young people who are watching? Um, um, just say something to them in the camera. All I, you want to say? all I want to say is from my experience, no matter what you put your effort and time in, if you pursue something and you put your dedication into it, you will succeed. And it's like with anything, boxing shows you that when there's someone who comes from nothing, especially that's what I love about boxing, you can have someone, for example, you've got Manny Pacquiao, he's a champion at the moment, he came from the slums, he had nothing, absolutely, when I say nothing, I mean nothing, he did barely had clothes or shoes to, even to put on his feet, now he's a champion, he's multi multi millionaire, but that's because of all the hard work he's put into it, so that goes to anything, it doesn't have to be boxing, it could be anything you want to put, you want to do, if you put your dedication into Fantastic. it, you will get there. Brilliant. Young man, yeah, Lars, would you like to say something to your friends? Share your experiences, Ahmad. Yeah, um, <laughs> my experience, uh, throughout my experience, I've learned a lot of uh, discipline and respect. I've gained a lot of respect and I've respected others. So the more like, you show dedication and determination the more you get did you, did you change your food habit like you're a boxer now isn't it no yeah, yeah. you use anything or what did you did you uh... yeah when i started off my footwork was absolutely off but now i've been developing uh, developing and my footwork's martial law has been good great fantastic fantastic last word you want to say anything last word just anything yeah. um do your, your message friends? your message come on school friends anything to get something in life, you need to focus and you need to Fantastic. show determination. If you don't, if you don't put effort into anything, then you won't get anywhere. So, do them as much as you can to um, show effort and put as much can as I you can. Just quickly into. say something for me, yeah, me to listen to a young brother like this, who's only 14 years old. It shows how much boxing has helped him mature and understand. If I'm not being funny, there's probably loads of 14-year-olds out there. They're probably out on the street now doing a dream, but he's in here, but that's all to do with boxing. But what is sort of impressing me a bit as well, so obviously I've met him a few times as well, and he's a, all the people I've met in boxing, what you don't realise is they're nice people. Very rarely you'd meet someone who's not nice. But the point I was making is he's so mature, you can see how much he's learnt from it already, and he's only been in this for a very small amount of time. So you can imagine after a few years down the line, whether he pursues it or he doesn't, all the qualities he's gained from it and all the benefits he'll have for himself. I just want to say, I, I'm proud of for that. Yeah, can, I, five seconds. can I just quickly add on, anyone, any viewers that's listening, um, I urge you to promote and help Brawlers Boxing um, grow in size and in strength because um, we are doing a lot to help young people and help the community and foster good relationships with the community and we want to inspire <laughs> we, we want to inspire young people to make a change so please do um, follow us on Instagram Brawlers Boxing um, on Twitter at Brawlers Boxing we've got a Facebook page and yeah so let's work together for the best of the community thank you very much brothers and sisters uh, we're just going to finish now
few seconds. Uh, I just want to say, just before I go, I really feel proud to be with these young people. I'm feeling young again. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to let me box again. If you start training, you might feel young. Fantastic. Um, especially um, Imran and uh, parents uh, and, um, and dad. Sorry. Ahmad and Handan Bay here. I think you should be proud of your boys because if you should look outside the window, there are a lot of things happening. But they and not in, 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 into that crowd. So I think you should be proud of them. And I respect them as well for you guys. I'm sure they done something really well to be where you are now. Um, brother, sister, I'm glad you um, And see you next week. And hopefully being something better as well, inshallah. Jazakumullah yes. khair. And salamu alaikum. Please stop pause, everyone. Okay, now we're going to do a demonstration. Are we on or off? Okay, young man, use that. And let's have a little demonstration. Hi, good me. Bad yeah. Okay. We live here. Huh? We are live. Are we live? We are live, yeah. Can people watch it? Yeah? <laughs> no one will watch <laughs> Magic Connection. Let's do this, bro. <laughs> These little pads have changed so many lives. There we are. Uh, now is Embran. On, on my right, and um, he, that's his coach as well, actually. Uh, Hanan Bai. So, let's see what's also going on. a very good friend. Also a good friend, okay. We're Hanan Bai, so what do you normally do? Show, do something. Show, so, I'll just show you a quick pad drill. drill. Um, one to your left, to your right hand, and rep. Just um, show that. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, this quick one. Nice. For the viewers out there. There we are, there we go. Yeah. There we go. That was the little punch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yay. Oh, no. Please. Whoa, whoa. You see, he's getting serious now. That's it too. That's it too. And that's fantastic. Can I just say, this young person, yeah, Emma, I'm really proud of you and all the young people out there as part of an affinity with Bowlers Boxing. You guys are doing a wonderful job and keep up, keep up the good work. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah? Cool. I say something for uh, middle part, please. Middle part yeah. video. Can I say, can I say, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure coming in. Uh, to Middle Path Radio Station. To all, my, to all the viewers, please support Middle Path and please support Rollers Boxing. Uh, we need to work together as communities uh, to spread love, to create cohesion, uh, to do outstanding work. Yes, and together we can do it. Would you like to say something? Hello, well, shout out to Middle Path Radio. Thanks for having us on tonight and helping to get across, help the community understand how boxing can help the youth and everyone else. Young man, to be fair, come on, you yeah. say something. Uh, this is actually the first time I've been doing an interview, so uh, this is really boosted my confidence. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 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 Radio, your number one online Islamic talk station.